possibly one of the worst experiences ever is when you go to turn on your computer and it just won't boot up no matter what you try and you have no idea why or maybe you do know exactly why, but by that point you can't boot into Windows or whatever OS to fix it. So in this video, I'm gonna give you four different bootable USB drives that you can make on your computer now that has all kinds of different recovery tools on them so that when disaster does strike, you will be prepared. And this could be whether Windows won't boot at all, or maybe you have a virus that is protecting itself so you can't delete it while Windows is running. And I do keep saying Windows, but only two of these bootable USBs are Windows specific. The other two are gonna apply no matter what kind of computer you're using and still should be used. And by the way, if you don't have a bunch of these drives lying around, you can get them dirt cheap on Amazon, like five of them for 32 gigabytes for like less than 20 bucks. All right, so the first boot drive I'm gonna talk about is Hiron Boot CD PE. It's not actually a CD, it just used to be called that, so they kept the name. It's basically a Swiss army knife of recovery tools. It has a whole bunch in every different category. You boot up and then you can run all of them outside of Windows or whatever operating system if you have to. Now, the original Hiron Boot CD, which was really popular, actually stopped being updated in 2012, but some of the supporters of the project actually took over and kind of continued updating it and now to this day it's called PE because it runs on Windows PE which I'll mention in a second and you can look on the website of course like everything I'm gonna put the links in the description you can see a list of all the different programs currently in it and these will be pre-installed on the USB drive that will be runnable through the environment when you boot into it. And when you do boot into it, it runs what's called Windows PE, or pre-installation environment, which is basically an extremely lightweight version of Windows 10. It's not meant to be a Windows version you run for your normal project. It's just for running outside of an operating system. And of course, it does boot right from this USB, which means it doesn't install to a drive or anything. It doesn't mess with your current hard drive or installation. It runs completely on its own. So in here, you're gonna get some of the standard Windows programs that come with basically every version of Windows, like Command prompt, notepad, disk manager, just some tools that are useful. And also some useful third-party programs are also installed like Chrome and Firefox. You got a bunch of hard drive tools for partitioning, imaging, for diagnostics, data recovery, you can see all sorts of stuff, and a couple antivirus programs, which obviously are helpful if you get infected. There's also some boot record tools like EasyBCD in case your boot record is messed up or something. Of course, a lot of this stuff is advanced. You might not even need all of it or know what to do with it, but sometimes it's simply just nice to be able to have a familiar interface of Windows to be able to maybe copy files off of it and go in there and see all the files in there, you know, have peace of mind that they're still there and be able to copy files off onto like a backup drive before you reformat or something. And it's really easy because you already know how it all works. So even just being able to navigate through files is useful useful on its own. All right, now before we continue, I do want to thank the sponsor of this video, Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access is a long-time well-established VPN service that can protect your internet connection from prying eyes of all kinds, even your own internet service provider. And I've been a subscriber to them since 2014. You can literally see my billing history here to prove it. To use it, you simply install the VPN software, and then you can choose any of the servers across a bunch of different countries. And the same goes for the mobile apps they have. You simply toggle it on and you're good. And this is especially important on your phone where you are more likely to use public Wi-Fi hotspots that are not secure otherwise. It is available on all desktop and mobile platforms and it's also available as browser extensions for Chrome, Firefox, and Opera. And it also has a bunch of additional features like a VPN kill switch to prevent accidentally revealing your connection and PIA Mace, which can block trackers, malware, and more. And there are advanced features like choosing the specific protocol for encryption, for DNS traffic, and more. And it also supports peer-to-peer -peer connections such as for BitTorrent. And of course, like any good VPN should, they do not keep any logs of any kind. And as a special deal just for you guys watching, if you go to privateinternetaccess.com slash Theojo, you can get a whopping 77% off the two-year plan, which comes out to just around $2.59 a month. So I'll put that link also right down in the description. And with that being said, let's continue. All right, so moving on, the next bootable USB drive is an Ubuntu Live USB. Ubuntu, of course, is a distribution of Linux, so this could be useful if you have to do anything in Linux that you can't do in your Windows operating system, especially if Windows isn't booting. And just like the other ones, it, again, runs right off the USB drive, so it's not manipulating any files on the computer or anything. Now, it does have the option to install Ubuntu on the computer, but I probably wouldn't do that. It might overwrite the boot sector operating system that you're currently using, so don't do that unless you know what you're doing, but you can still just 
click Try Ubuntu and get right into a Linux interface. And here you can see there are some included programs that might come in handy. You could, again, just browse through the files, although it's a little bit different interface than Windows that you might be used to, but it's still something that's pretty useful. And of course, because it's not Windows, you can access any files without having to worry about any kinds of permissions stopping you from copying files. I think that is still actually possible with Windows PE, but you definitely don't have to worry about it in Ubuntu. Some especially useful programs you might need to use are Gparted, which is a partition editor, which can come in real handy if you have to reformat a drive or extend or reduce a partition, something like that. And of course, there's the trusty terminal, which you can just use for an uncountable number of things, really. All right, moving on to number three, the third bootable USB drive you have is a copy of the Windows 10 installation media set up as a bootable drive. This is going to contain an entire copy of the Windows operating system, so it allows you to not just boot and use a couple tools that I'll mention about, but it will also allow you, if you need to, on whatever computer, install an entire copy of Windows 10 from scratch, clean install. But of course, if you already have Windows installed and it's just not booting correctly, it also has some tools that are helpful for trying to repair it. So after you boot it up, you click repair your computer and then go to troubleshoot. And basically it's gonna have a bunch of different tools you can see here, such as startup repair. You can try and see that if that'll fix it automatically. You have the command prompt if you wanna do something with that. You can also access system restore points, which is really important. This is one of the first things I would try if you did something recently and it messed it up, you can go to a restore point from before you did that. And also you can uninstall recent updates in case it just messed up after installing an update, you can try and undo those. There's also a couple options for like restoring a system image, which you probably don't have. That's like if you copy a exact copy of your computer onto a drive or something. And also you can boot to the UEFI settings, which is basically just your BIOS. So of course this one's really useful to have because of all those recovery tools that are available to you. And it's just kind of nice to have the ability to do a fresh clean install of Windows on some computer. And that way you don't have to go searching to download the installation media every time. All right, so finally, the fourth bootable USB drive you should have is a Windows 10 recovery drive. Now, on the surface, this is gonna look really similar to the installation media. You might be wondering, wait, what is the difference here? But there are a couple key differences that I'll mention. So basically, when you go to create a recovery drive for Windows, it's gonna do the same thing as one of those recovery partitions you may have hidden on your computer. When you boot into it, it's gonna look really similar to the Windows 10 installation media. It just does not have the ability to install a fresh copy of Windows, but it does have the ability to factory reset your computer back to what it did when it was just fresh from the factory and when you got it. And this is different in an important way from just doing a regular clean install using the other installation media. And that's because when you create the recovery drive with Windows, it basically stores some of the system specific data and programs that came with that computer. For example, if you bought an LG computer, sometimes it comes with LG specific software and drivers for that computer or HP or whatever. You know how sometimes it comes with whatever programs they had installed, you might call it bloatware, sometimes not. It'll basically, from my understanding, create a drive that recovers not just the blank version of Windows, but also that stuff too. And it puts that on the recovery drive. So it really does recover it to the point where you got it from when you bought it off the shelf, which is different than if you did a blank, completely clean install of Windows. So to do this, when you boot into the drive, you should see a new option called recover from a drive. I say you should, but we'll get to that in a second. But basically this is the option that does the same thing as reset your PC if you were able to boot into Windows. You know, the reset PC, same idea here, except it's doing it from the drive. But there is one major caveat, which apparently seems to be some kind of bug, and that is you might not actually see this option, which is kind of the whole point of the recovery drive, if you use it on a certain type of system, specifically one that boots from an NVMe SSD, which I do, and therefore I can't actually see that option that's supposed to be there. In fact, when I couldn't see it at first, I thought maybe they've removed this feature, which would have been weird, because that's kind of the whole point of the recovery drive. But then I found this bug article or bug page, I don't know what it is on Microsoft's website, and it describes this issue exactly, which is that this option to recover from a drive is not available if you're booting from an NVMe. And it does say here, Microsoft is aware of this issue, so I don't think it's supposed to be like that, but just be aware that if you are booting from an NVMe SSD, which could include laptops, for example, the memory is just soldered onto the board, it's not a SATA drive or something like that, a lot of laptops have that, note that this might not even work on your laptop, so it's good to probably maybe test that out before something bad happens, and then you'll just kind of be aware of that. Now, I'm not 100% sure that's why it's not showing up, but 
Both of my computers have NVMe drives and it's not showing up for them, so I'm assuming that's why. However, I do still think it's probably worth it to create this recovery drive. There might be other ways to use it that I was not able to find. Maybe in the future when they patch it, then it'll still be useful again. And of course it does have those other tools, just like on the installation media, that are helpful for recovering. All right, so now that you know about those four different boot drives, I'm gonna show you how to make each one. And of course, you're gonna need four different USB drives that are completely free, don't have any important data on them. And if you do have important data on them and you wanna use that, copy it all off because you are going to wipe all of these drives. They can only be used for this particular use, each one. For the recovery drive, that should be at least 16 gigabytes. It's gonna depend on how much data it needs to back up to be able to recover, but it'll tell you. Next, for the Windows installation drive, that's gonna to need to be at least eight gigabytes. For the Ubuntu Live CD, it says that should be at least four gigabytes, and the Hiron Boot CD doesn't need to be very big at all, only like two gigabytes or more. All right, so let's start off with the Windows 10 recovery drive. Now, you're gonna to have to do this for it to work effectively on the same computer you intend to use it on to recover because of course it's storing a lot of data specific to that computer so if you have multiple computers you potentially want to be able to recover then you're gonna have to maybe make multiple drives but maybe just do it on your main computer anyway open up the start menu and just search for recovery drive and then run where it says create a recovery drive and then when it comes up you want to check this is important back up system files to recovery drive this is kind of the whole point of having the recovery drive as opposed to just the installation media and my understanding is if you don't select this, then you're not gonna get that option to recover from a USB drive in the boot menu. All right, so after you click next there, you're just gonna have to wait. And I guess here it's just kind of collecting all the files that it's gonna put onto it. And then it's going to tell you the required size depending on how much data it is. For mine, for example, it said 16 gigabytes and it kind of took a while to load it up. Then you have to select the flash drive, make sure you're choosing the correct one and make sure it's blank because everything on it's gonna be gone. And then you click create and then wait. And this is probably gonna take a long time. For me, it actually took like several hours and this could take longer if it's USB 2.0 as opposed to 3.0, I don't know, but just be prepared to kind of wait for a while. But after it finishes, you're all done, it's good to go. And that's the easiest one of the four that we're gonna talk about for how to create. All right, next up we have the Windows 10 installation media. This is gonna involve downloading the ISO off of Microsoft's website and then it'll have the tool to create it from there. So go to the download Windows 10 page on Microsoft's website. I'll put that link in the description and then go down below where it says create Windows 10 installation media and click download tool now. After it's all downloaded, you run it and then wait a little bit of time for it to prepare. And then when you go to the next thing, check create installation media. And I would just keep all the defaults here unless you maybe wanna change the language or you know that you want a different edition of Windows 10 if it even gives you that option depending on your country or something. Just keep it default in most cases and then go next and then you select the USB drive and then make sure that you pick the correct one again and then it's blank, double check that. And then just wait, it'll download the files necessary and then add it all to the drive and then it should be good to go. All right, moving on to the Ubuntu Live USB. This one is gonna take a little bit more steps than the previous couple. Unfortunately, they don't have a simple, easy to download tool. You have to download a couple things, but it's not too hard to follow the instructions. They have a whole tutorial on their site. So what you do is go to the Ubuntu create a bootable USB stick on Windows page slash tutorial. And I'll put that link in the description again. And then as it says, you're gonna first need to download a program called Rufus, which is going to burn the ISO image of Ubuntu onto the drive. So download the Rufus program, and then next you're gonna have to separately download the Ubuntu desktop ISO file. And again, I'll put that link in the description. On that page, you're gonna see several different options. I would just do the top one labeled LTS. LTS stands for long-term service. It just means that it's gonna be supported without necessarily needing to be updated as often, and it'll be supported for a long time. After you have the Rufus tool and the ISO downloaded, just follow the instructions on this tutorial. It's better laid out than what I would be able to describe in this video. It's really simple from here though. You literally just make sure the settings match as on the screenshots they have. You just make sure you select the ISO file and then select the correct USB. And again, make sure all the settings and stuff is checked the same and then just run it and it'll burn it to that USB and be good to go. All right, now finally, how to create the higher end boot CD PE USB Kind of a mouthful, I know, but it's actually a little bit easier even than the Ubuntu one. So to do this, you go to the download page for the Hiram Boot CD, again, link in the description. And here it might be a little bit confusing. You actually have to scroll all the way down and then click on the ISO file name and then download that. It's not really clear that that's the download, but that's what it is. And that is the ISO image that's gonna be burned onto the USB, kind of like the same ISO that we had for Ubuntu. And then you're gonna next go to the USB booting page. You can just click it here, but again, I'll put the link in the description if you want. And then download the tool it has linked called ISO to USB. 
and then run it. And this one's a little bit simpler than Rufus, so I'll just show you what to do. You simply choose the Hiren ISO, and then the USB device. Again, like everything, double check, go into Windows Explorer, make sure this is the correct one, it's all blank already. And then you can choose a label name for it, and then click Process, and it'll go through and create that USB. All right, so at this point, all the drives should be fully bootable and working. I would definitely recommend testing these out and making sure they work before you know, you're know you in crisis mode trying to figure out why your computer crashed and you're trying to get these to work and then you realize you didn't do it right or something. And also to make sure that you know how to boot them. If you don't know how to boot to a USB device already, I would definitely look that up for your computer. There's usually a different procedure depending on the model. For example, sometimes you press F10 while it's booting up, sometimes F2, F8, whatever. Look it up for your model, make sure you know how to do that. So that then if something does ever happen to your computer, you'll now have a good idea of possibly where you can start for troubleshooting, like running some of those tools, like the recovery thing, the system restore points, or if you need to copy files off of, you'll now have a couple tools you can start from. Thanks again to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. And again, be sure to go to that link in the description or right here where you can get 77% off a two-year plan. Now, if you guys want to keep watching, the next video to recommend is where I was talking about how you can figure out about how much time left your SSD has based on how much data has been written to it already and the spec for what it's rated for. So I go through all that right there. You can just click on. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.